So there's a time to think, and there's a time to act. And this gentleman, there's no time to think. We'll have one more round, and then we'll go. Jester? I couldn't say hi to John without hugging him. He's a big, heavy man, and yet he did. He had that energy. Free and silly, but like a child silly, you know, like a giggle. All the things that he brought to every role, which is you just loved him, and you cared about him. You wanted him to be your next neighbor or your friend. He was supportive. He was funny. He was positive about everything. He was. He was one of the best. I loved him. He was a remarkable human being. John Candy never really got over the death of his father when he was five years old. He said later that it left a big sort of hole in his heart. Television provided a sort of alternate universe for him. He would never have auditioned for Second City. He was tricked into it by his friends. But there was no question from the beginning of his career that he was going to become a Hollywood star. Do you think there's something about your training up there in Toronto that makes it different? I think it was probably just the time uh, for us, you know, with, with being involved with Second City at the time. Improvisational theater was sort of a common blood that we all shared, you know, the work that we were doing. It was that whole period. It was an incredible time. And uh, when Saturday Night Live started, uh, the theater owners of Second City got f frightened that we were all going to they were going to get raided and everybody leave ship. So we created SCTV. <laughs> Being on SCTV really gave John and his colleagues on that show a tremendous amount of creative freedom. Things that you could do on TV that you could never do on stage. The Schmengi Brothers just became sort of a regular hilarious staple of SCTV about polka playing brothers. Give us a Schmengi. And then we'd like to thank you for for letting me give the. To you <laughs> he created a fantastic range of characters. This was really the beginning of the big ride for John. Splash was Candy's big breakthrough because it gave him a wonderful role in an extremely successful, enjoyable movie that had a huge mainstream audience. John's genius was always bringing something alive once you had the germ of an idea that he could take it further and that nobody knew where he was going to go with it, including him. There is a scene when we're in the Winnebago and, um, you know, it's John Candy and Bill Pullman and myself. And we were sitting there for a long time and they're setting up and John's going on about something. I mean, he just goes off on these, like, riffs. Riffs that he would just break into because John was always performing. He was performing for everybody all the time. And your gut is killing because you're laughing so hard. Bill Pullman would say, what the hell is that? You know, he would point out there and you know John Candy would torture him and say where what I don't see anything I just see that blue thing hanging there <laughs> John was the perfect guy to be paired with because he would be like a good mog should be very protective you know and he would stick up for me one million space bucks we'll be able to pay off pizza the hut give me paw <laughs> He was so nice. He was so uh, friendly and warm. There was no attitude. Uh, there was no star trip he was ever on. Um, he was simply uh, one of the guys. A very generous performer. We did two benefits together. And extremely generous to the other person. He, he gave you the chance to do your laughs, to be, do your breath. It's not, uh, well, I, I can do this, and I will do this, and I will do this. It's more we. It's, it's, it's collective. Let's, you know, this would be funny. You're, I won't say that line. You will. I think you always wanted to be recognized as a more um, complete, versatile actor, which I think you really was. Comedians uh, have an emotional sensitivity. This isn't the set, is it? Delirious was an interesting script, almost a James Thurber kind of thing about a guy who gets somehow dropped down into the middle of his own soap opera. There were fringe benefits for Candy because he worked with some people who became very good friends of his, Tom Mankiewicz, the director, and Meryl Hemingway, who was in it.
Uh, this particular character in this film uh, is, is a lovable guy. Do you ever wish someday down the road you're going to get a role that makes you a real meanie? <laughs> yeah, I just took one on. As a matter of fact, it's funny you mentioned that with, uh, with uh, Oliver Stone in, in the JFK movie. He'll be coming out and playing Dean Andrews, who was the attorney for Clay Shaw, who was not such a nice person. So that's, that's a nice little switch for me. And I mean, I was flabbergasted that Oliver called and said, would you do this? So, yeah, I think it was Woody Allen who said that when you're doing comedy, you're always sitting at the children's table. And for Candy, it was important to do things like Only the Lonely and JFK. Good time, Johnny. A lot of his friends call him Good Time Johnny. Dan Aykroyd used to call him. And he was always out for a good time. We shot Once Upon a Crime in Monte Carlo. The woman is a compulsive liar. She's only saying that to protect me. Because, in fact, my wife at the hour of the crime was in the arms of another man. And that man, Mr. Inspector, is the real murderer of Madame Van Dugan. Alfonso de la Peña. Alfonso! <laughs> we were in Monte Carlo about... Oh, three weeks or so. So John decided that he was going to treat his sort of close crew to a boat ride. So he hired this 60-foot yacht. He stocked it with food. He had this amazing lobster, seafood lunch catered, champagne. It was a great treat. John was always doing something like that for friends and crew. He was a generous man. Just a sweetheart. I mean, just a real sweet, kind man. Wagons East was a tragedy and a fiasco, and there was a movie that Candy shouldn't have done and didn't want to do, but he had a contract. And of course, someone in his physical condition, being 100 pounds overweight and having serious health problems, should not have been going up into the mountains in Mexico where this film was being shot. This was not a good combination. I was actually, um, the day we heard about it, I was doing a little movie that Jim Belushi was in. He and I heard about it at the same time. And we just hugged each other and we cried. We just couldn't believe that he was dead. When I first heard about it, it seemed so impossible to me. He seemed so filled with living and life and joy. He was fun to be around. Uh, we worked well together and always had a lot of laughs together, a lot of fun working together. He was a partner. He was one of a kind. John Candy's funeral in Los Angeles was a big deal. It was a Catholic funeral. Then a couple of weeks later, there was a memorial service at a church in Toronto for, you know, Toronto folk who could not be in L.A. And Catherine O'Hara gave a very moving eulogy. We did SCTV together when we all tried to come up with opening credits that would somehow tell the audience exactly what we were trying with the show to say about TV. It was John who said, why don't we just throw a bunch of TVs off a building? <laughs> Haven't we met? Perhaps. And perhaps we'll meet again. I think John Candy is remembered by anybody who cares about comedy and has a TV or a VCR. The great characters he created on SCTV are in reruns constantly, so he's always being rediscovered there. And his movies are both on television and in the video shops. He created his own universe. Candy had sort of a double attitude to his mortality. On the one hand, there was this constant kind of resolve to do better and to exercise and all of that. But on the other hand, there was an attitude that maybe there was nothing he could do about it. He had this metabolism, he had this family history, he had a father who died of a heart attack around the same age. So there was an element, I think, in his whole life and personality of whatever's gonna happen will happen, let's just have a good time while we're here. Let's enjoy the moment. Suscríbete a mi canal.